Hi guys, Brian from the gas station back again. I just wanted to do a review today of some more uh, cheap cameras with great lenses. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is there's more and more people uh, asking me, uh, you know, what camera should I get? Um, and to be honest, in the end it really doesn't matter. But uh, we, there's so many good inexpensive cameras out there that allow you to add great glass to your cameras that it, it doesn't make sense to not buy them. Um, you know, they're, they're very inexpensive. You can get cameras, great cameras, really, really cheap. Um, and uh, and just go out and shoot. Um, the things that are going to really make the most difference in your photography are a your your knowledge of photography and your knowledge of composition and lighting and exposure and all that stuff. Uh, the camera really is just a tool to let you do that. Um, it lets you determine you know do you want do you want to just take a silhouette of somebody you know do you want them backlit why don't you want them backlit there's there's more and more to photography than just the camera and I, I think you are all already probably know that but I think we lose track of that sometimes but so I want what I wanted to do is give you guys options for inexpensive cameras to get out there that are going to give you the flexibility to go out there and shoot what you want whether you just want to point and shoot or whether you want to take things and go fully manual and maybe do you know on some of these cameras you can do aperture priority you can do shutter priority on some uh, some of them you can just set up as point and shoot. Some of them are fully manual. Uh, actually, I don't have any fully manual cameras here today, but um, they're all cameras that you can you can start off and work with. Um, the cameras I selected today are, are all SLRs. That doesn't mean I'm anti rangefinder. I actually love rangefinders. I, that's my primary means of shooting. I love rangefinders. I'm a rangefinder guy. I do love SLRs though. I mean, I'm not anti SLR by any stretch of the imagination. So. I think everything has its purpose, uh, and there's an appropriate use for, for each of these things. Um, one thing I have neglected in most of my videos has been Nikon stuff, and I don't know why that's worked out, but it just has for some reason. So I'm adding some Nikon stuff in today, and I haven't uh, been real great with adding Olympus stuff either, so I'm adding some of that. So, um, again, basically, you know, take any of these cameras, but do some research and and, and Learn how to use these cameras. Learn learn about you know, learn about the rule of thirds. Learn all the rules that you need to know to make you a better photographer, and then you'll know when to break the rules, or you'll you'll feel the need to break a rule. Um, you know, I really think you should should know what you're doing before you dismiss it. Um, a lot of uh, uh, people. You know, well, you know, there's the whole Lomographic movement too, which is basically you just grab a camera and shoot, which I think is great. But I think if you really want to grow as a photographer, I think you you really should learn photography as a craft. But you know, that's up to you guys. However you want to do it, I'm not anti-Lomography. I'm just not. I don't do it. So um, you know, if I have a vision of how I want something taken, that's what I do. I I, I use the camera as a tool to help me capture that moment or or implement that vision as to how I want it seen. So anyway, um, so let's get started. So cheapest way in, I don't know, I I guess I'll start with this. Um, this this is the, uh, the Canon uh, Rebel K2. I bought this camera at Walmart, brand new in the box, new old stock, and I got this for 60 bucks with the kit lens. That was a fantastic deal. You can buy these cameras, these little K2s and the uh, uh, I actually have one over here, uh, the Rebel 2000s. You can pick these up. Uh, you can pick these cameras all, pick them up all day at, at twenty, you know, for like 25, 30 bucks. Uh, you can go to keh.com. I recommend keh. Um, see what they have for SLRs for inexpensive cameras. Uh, see what you can get for that. I'm shooting these with a kit lens. Um, you know. Can I get great shots with a kit lens? Well, if I were a better photographer, my, of course, my pictures would be better. But yeah, I mean, if you're a good photographer and you're 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 working hard at your craft, you can get good pictures with anything. So the camera really doesn't matter. Uh, this camera gives you all the tools, really, honestly, that you need to take great pictures. It gives you, you have <coughs> aperture priority, shutter priority. If you want to get, and I highly recommend everybody get one, is a uh, what they call a nifty fifty, or everybody starting out. 
needs, I think, a nifty 50. Um, and, or, which is a, a 50 millimeter lens generally, or a standard lens, that's reasonably fast. And usually those are about 1.8 or so, uh, with some 1.7, 1.9 here or there. But anyway, reasonably fast lens. This lens is going to make you move around and it's going to let you uh, alter your depth of field and you're going to get a, a sort of a good feel on how to compose your shots, how to realize your vision uh, within the camera. Again, like I said, I have kit lenses on these, but we can still take great shots with them. I'm not going to have the depth of field that I would necessarily like, but composition-wise and maybe capturing the moment, telling the story, I can definitely do that with this. There's no reason not to. Anyway. All right, so uh, this this camera, like I said, Rebel K2, really cheap. What, what you give up in this basically is build quality, and uh, you lose stuff like a metal lens mount. This one has a plastic lens mount, um, and you give up, you know, features and stuff. Actually, I'm going to work my way up here in, in cameras and kind of show you what some of the some of the differences are. I'm not going to review these in depth at all. I'm just going to give you a general overview. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is silver and shiny and whatever. It doesn't look as black and pro or whatever. But what a cool little camera. It's got the LCD on the back. It's very much like my uh, uh, Canon 7NE where you can change the functions and it's, you know, it's got an LCD where you can still, uh, you know, go into your menus and stuff like that. So um, it's just a more basic camera. It's much lighter too. It's a very light camera It's because it's mostly plastic. But this camera still works. And if I throw it or break it or whatever, have I lost 20, anything but $25 or $60 or whatever it is? That's not a big deal. If I drop my Leica, I'm seriously weeping and, and probably going to, I don't know, I, I would just die. But anyway, so I would rather, in a lot of ways, just take one of these out and just go out and be free and have fun and shoot and enjoy it. But let's say you need a little bit more control or you want more free access to buttons or something like that. You can then move up to something like this, which is, the, uh, very, which is also very similar to the, my Canon 7 or the 7NE. Um, or the 70 e whichever one you whichever one you choose. This is the, the uh, Canon uh, EOS A2, and this is again a prosumer camera, higher end camera, um, not quite professional, but but very good quality. Um, mostly, what you get is more access to buttons. This has like a little scroll wheel on the back uh, where you can adjust your your aperture, your priority, you can set that stuff up. Um, it does have some program modes where it's got the, the green box. So if you really just wanted to set it as a point and shoot, just you you can do that. Um, those options are there. Um, it also has, you know, like the, uh, the portrait mode and the action mode and all that stuff. But you know what? Get out of that stuff, guys, if you can. Um, at least go into aperture priority or, you know, again, if you have a nifty 50, you're going to be changing your depth of field with that and it's going to adjust the shutter, uh, to suit. You know, you shoot with a little faster film, maybe you shoot with 400 or, or whatever and give yourself the flexibility to work to work with that kind of stuff um, this is a great camera um, you know this, this is you know you can shoot high speed you know this continuous I think it's like four frames I'd say about four frames a second that's my guess um, and uh, you can change all kinds of stuff with it and there's no eye control on this or anything like that but a great camera and you have access to all the Canon EF lenses which is great. All the modern lenses pretty much you can use on this except for the EFS. EFS lenses do not work. If you're a Canonista or whatever, please correct me if I'm wrong or whatever. Put the explanation below. But these are designed for EF lenses. Okay? That's the long and short of it. So, and uh, you can... Uh, you can get a lot of great glass for these, you know, and you can, if you decide you want to be a Canon guy, you can sit there and you can move all your EF lenses up to, if you decide to go digital, take, you know, you can take them with you, you can do that. If you buy your Nifty 50, you know, you can use that going forward. Um, but they're great cameras. This one has a vertical grip on it, so you can go ahead and shoot uh, vert uh, vertically and, and shoot portraits without having to, uh, you know, to move your arm all over the place. You can just switch switch the camera in your hand, just switch it from here to here, and now I'm shooting portrait. So you can shoot all day like that. So, great camera, the Canon A2. I want to do a, a, a bigger review on this, and I will coming up. Trust me, it'll be coming. Um, moving on. Um, if you still want to stick it a little old school, you can go with one of the uh, older Olympus. This is the Olympus OM-10. Um, the double-digit Olympus cameras um, there's the OM-1, the OM-2, and those guys, OM-3, OM-4. Those are all the higher-end, more pro-oriented 
uh, models. The OM10, uh, like this, anything with a double digit is going to be more prosumer, a little bit lower end, um, a little bit more plastic around the camera, but it's overall still a great camera and still gives you access to the amazing Olympus glass. This is a uh, uh, F1.8 uh, Olympus OM, uh, OM lens, and it's just fantastic glass. It's great. It looks fantastic. You're going to be able to do everything you need to do with this camera. This camera, uh, it does have a program mode and whatever. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go into the whole review of the camera. Um, it is battery operated. I don't know if that controls the shutter or not, but... Um, uh, there are batteries and stuff for, for meters, etc. Uh, this camera, you, you know, I have the motor drive on it, so you can you can rifle away at it if you want, or you can uh, you can go with the manual wind, however you want to do it. Um, but nice, small, light, comfortable camera, uh, really good quality. I mean, you're not going to go wrong with Olympus or the Olympus Glass, the Zuiko Glass. So. Um, really good stuff. I, I'm a huge fan of Olympus. So if you see an Olympus OM2 somewhere around, whatever, grab something like that. They're great cameras. Olympus OM1, fantastic cameras. The OM10, I'm a huge fan. Um, great camera. So, you know, a little bit more old school, a little more retro. Um, I'm kind of, the reason I'm kind of bringing in all these like 80s and 90s cameras it's because they're super cheap, guys. They're just ridiculously cheap because kind of nobody wants them. And there's no reason why to not have them. They're great cameras. They still do the job. Um, uh, Pentax here, low-end Pentax uh, ZX50 uh, still gives you aperture priority, shutter priority, motor drive. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> the amount I spent on the motor drive, I got a motor drive for my, M, my Leica M6. That thing costs... I mean, I could buy almost a whole setup for, you know, for this camera, you know, for the, the amount I paid up for my motor drive. I mean, really, does, it, does that make sense? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I happen to like the light guy. That, it just suits my shooting style. But, uh, and it's comfortable for me, but there's no less quality I'm going to get out of my composition. Key is the composition with one of these. I should be able to shoot great pictures with this. It's a great camera. It came out lenses. You can use the autofocus, the uh, Pentax autofocus lenses on this. There's a whole world of lenses and glass you can get for this little humble ZX50. It's a cool camera. Why not? I mean, you know, if you really want to go old school, you want to wind, get, get one of those. If you want to just practice your composition, if you want to practice you know, setting your, 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 your exposure settings, doing it yourself. You can do it with this. You can. And it has meters built in and all that stuff. Everything's built into this lowly little ZX50. Um, so, but if you want to stay with Pentax, you can move up. If you say, ah, oh, the thing looks too cheap and I want to get, uh, I want to get the big bad boy. Well, you can go for this. This is the Pentax PZ1. This was their top of the line model at the time. Uh, it's all your controls and everything are done actually kind of ingeniously through this little uh, wheel and button array, and they got a menu system which is actually really nice to use. Again, another camera I want to do an in-depth review on. I really like this camera. I have meh glass on it. I have a Sigma zoom lens, but the camera I love. It's really great, and it's uh, it's just. <laughs> it's nice, comfortable, it's, it's fast, Pentaxes have been really reliable, uh, really interesting design, you know, again, you, some people may think it's ugly, it, it's really comfortable, it's one of the most comfortable cameras I've ever held, to be honest, um, so I'm kind of like, I'm digging this camera, it's got the LCD on the top, Pentax, Minolta, those guys were really into different, uh, you know, features and gizmos and all that stuff, and, and these are great cameras to do that with, why not, uh, just... Take advantage. And any of these cameras here, honestly, with the, the Olympus might cost you a couple bucks more, but, um, and uh, let's see what else do I have here. I have my N90S. These might cost you a few more bucks, but any of these cameras, well under $100. Some of these $25, $20, bucks, 10 bucks. If you go to a, a thrift store, you might find them, you know, even cheaper. Um, these are not expensive cameras. Uh, you can go to a KEH, pick up, uh, just look up any of these cameras and you'll, you'll see you can get them relatively inexpensively. It's the glass that you want to invest in. And, you know, so, so if you, you know, if you want to, if you want to start with a, with a kit zoom, start with a kit zoom. It's not going to hurt you. It's only going to help you work on your composition. Be the best you can be with what you have. Um, anyway, so Pentax PZ1, excellent 
camera recommendation. And this is not to say, guys, that, guys, that there's that these are the only cameras out there. There's tons of them. I have tons of them on my shelf right here. I just kind of went and picked what I caught, thought were some interesting ones, ones that I particularly like. But there's there's no reason not to get something else. I have a Minolta Maxim uh, 9000 here. Uh, I have a Nikon 8008. I've got N70s. I've got N65s. I've got N80s. I've got all kinds of cameras. 8008s. I've got uh, EOS Elans. They're all all these older cameras from like the 80s and 90s are going to be super cheap, and they're all most of them are compatible with the modern stuff. Um, so you know this is again this is not the end of the road. These are not the the top cameras that I'm saying you should get. I'm saying don't necessarily steer away from these guys. These guys are great. This camera is a tank. This is the uh, the Nikon N90s. So here's my Nikon love guys. N90s. I've got a Nikon Nifty 50, uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 AF. You know it's an AF uh, autofocus lens. This camera is unbelievable. This thing is, it's a tank. It's its heavy, durable. This is definitely great quality stuff. It's got Nikon matrix metering. Um, it's got all the modes you'll ever need. It's going to, it's, you know, all the metering you're ever going to need. You can put on the Nikon flash system. You can go crazy with this camera. And these things are everywhere. You can find them inexpensively. So you'll see the N90S. Sometimes it comes with a grip, um, a body grip. I don't have the grip for it. Um, but uh, you can definitely get it, uh, you know, and you can go out and it's got, you know, it's got fast autofocus. Bang. I mean, these things are quick. Faster than I can focus my rangefinder or, you know, most of the time. So, great camera. Why not? This thing, it's got, you know, the uh, viewfinder blackout. Uh, so, you know, if you're putting it on a tripod and you want to, you're trying to, uh, you know, block out any erroneous light from changing your uh, your exposure. It's got that. It's got all these great pro features. Um, it's a prosumer camera. It's not you know the the F5 or the F4 or the F6. It's a it's but it's a really high end camera. This is not a junky little camera. This is a camera that you can you can use for a long time, get a lot of use of, get get great shots. It really is awesome. I I highly recommend the N90s. By the way, I, I think it's an awesome camera. And then you go across something a little lighter, a little more manual. This is an unbelievable little camera, a Nikon EM. I love this little camera. It's so cute. It's just, it's tiny, it's small, buttery smooth, uh, uh, film advance. It's a nice click. It's just, a, what a great little like street camera. This is fantastic. It takes all the Nikon lenses. Why not? invest in something cool and, and small like that um you know beautiful viewfinder it's not as big as as some i don't think but uh it's it, it's crystal clear and it's just it's got automatic features you can put an automotive i think it's shutter priority i'm not sure but anyway if anybody knows about the em put, put you know all the information you have in there i'm going to do a review on it later too so it does take a battery all these take batteries so you got to stock up on batteries, and batteries might even cost you more than the camera, at fifteen or twenty dollars, maybe depending upon which batteries you get. Um, but you know these cameras are out there, guys. Don't get hung up on the gear. They're all great cameras. Learn your composition. Learn how to how to compose a photo. Learn about depth of field. Learn how you can generate depth of field uh, with a zoom lens. How can you do that? I'm thinking about doing some instructional stuff. You guys that are interested in that, let me know, and I'll start. Uh, going through how to, how to's and stuff like that and not just the gear but anyway interesting stuff um so you know and what else is out there what's what else is cheap um here why don't we do this if you want to just do composition get, get yourself a point and shoot get the composition this is this was a high-end point this is no it's, it's kind of obscene anyway but um you can go get yourself a point and shoot and Film point and shoots are a dime a dozen. You can get them all over the place, and they're super cheap. Try and get you know one that appears to be decent. Uh, hopefully, you get some decent glass in it, and you know it'll come out you know reasonably sharp. Most of them will come out sharp. The hard part is getting blurred background and stuff like that, and you need that with shallow depth of field with a a lens that has a you know a big enough opening. The the lower the uh, lower the f number, so you want to you know f one eight or something like that. You'll get a more shallow depth of field. But if you want to work on composition, no reason not to get a point and shoot. Just go out and shoot that. There's so many options out there, guys. This is like a great time to be buying cameras. 
Uh, there's, you know, so many of these film cameras are going overlooked, and they're really, they're, they're really not bad. Uh, you, you can really do a lot. I mean, I'm not necessarily re recommending this one, but this just had one, you know, it's a point and shoot. It's got a zoom. It's got a super slow lens. But if I can't make great pictures with this, I can't make great pictures. Honestly, if you can't, if you, if you don't know composition, you're going to have trouble. And I encourage you guys, please go out and shoot. Enjoy it. Whatever you have, don't. Don't obsess too much over the gear like I do, and uh, you end up with more cameras than you know what to do with. Um, anyway, this has been fun stuff. Guys, uh, I appreciate everything. You guys are really supportive, uh, and, and I'm enjoying, uh, enjoying doing these videos. i got much more stuff to come. I want to show you guys a lot more stuff. I'd like to start uh, doing some instructions and stuff. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, anyway, that's about it. Brian at the gas station. Uh, you guys just go out there and shoot. Grab yourself a camera. Get a cheap camera. Get a cheap camera even if you have a good camera and, and test yourself a little bit. If you got money and you got plenty of money and you just go out and get yourself a cheap camera. Try it out. Test yourself. See what you can do when you don't have the, the great stuff. Give yourself a challenge. Make that a challenge. And uh, yeah, show me what you got. Yeah, maybe we should do that. Uh, you know, find the cheapest camera you can and come up with the best shots you can. Anyway, that's it. Brian, the gas station. Guys, you take care and go out and shoot. Thank you.